Greetings, Fright Nights. I'm Count Jacula. And I'm the Horror Guru. And uh, we just saw Yakuza Apocalypse. Holy oh, shit. Holy crap. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Yakuza Whoa. Apocalypse is one of the latest. I say one of because he always has multiple on the line. Uh, on the production line. Um, it is one of the latest uh, Takashi Miike films, who is one of my favorite Japanese filmmakers. Yeah, of all yeah, time. yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> hang on a minute. Just got, just want to adjust this just a little bit. Yeah, that might be in the vlog because production value. All right. So let's, let's, all right. Uh, I think rather than going into the plot, like, let's talk about who may or may not like this movie. Okay. Now, a lot of critics were like, this movie is dumb. The movie is dumb. That's kind of partially the point. Yeah. In fact, it is a literal point of the movie that is spoken. Well, it is a beautiful exercise in silly, surrealist awesomeness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Mike is at his, at his most Mike in this movie. Well, absolutely. It very much feels like a return to some of his more absurd films he used to make when he was a lot younger. Yeah, like Happiness of Cat Curries and Fucking all that jazz. Fucking full metal Yakuza. Yakuza, <laughs> like, yeah. Or, or uh, God, there was one that I can't remember what it was called, but it's a bunch of high school kids that all decide to start a gang. And like at one point, like oh, there's, man, I missed this one. There's, there's like a, there's like a chick in the gang who learns how to shoot darts out of her vagina. Like, it's just, yeah, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we, there's another movie that we, we've talked about very briefly in several other vlogs called Dead or Alive, which is not an adaptation of the video game. No, it is very simply. Cop versus Yakuza boss. Yeah, the entire movie is essentially a cop and a Yakuza boss going at it over the course of the movie, uh, trying to take each other down, back and forth. And then in the last ten minutes, it goes ape shit. Yeah, yeah, this movie, that movie starts out with, like, a Yakuza guy doing a line of coke up a Hot Wheels ramp. Yeah, which you think that that's about, like, the kind of movie, that's the kind of absurd, absurd, absurdness yeah. the movie's gonna take. Uh, that's yeah. as far as it's gonna go. Yeah, the, the dude is eating noodles and they get shot in the stomach and the noodles shoot out yeah. of his stomach. And then it but the, kind but of becomes this normal <laughs> cop drama yeah. movie until the very end where they get into a car accident. The cop and the fucking Yakuza guy get into a car accident. Cars blow up. The Yakuza boss steps out, pulls a rocket launcher out of nowhere, literally nowhere. Yeah, you can only assume he pulled it out of his ass. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it's it's that anime thing where someone just reaches back and something comes out. And with this guy, it's a rocket launcher. And then the cop literally puts his hand in his own heart to pull it out. It is a beam of light. Yeah. And, and they fire at each other. And then the world explodes and the movie ends. Yeah, it, it is. Th that's Dead or Alive. And that's me, gay. Like, yeah. So and, the beginning and of Dead or Alive and the end of Dead or Alive is Yakuza Apocalypse all the time. Absolutely. And it's worth noting that there are more than one Dead Alive movies. There's yes. three. It's a trilogy. Um, and it's the same actors in all of them playing different characters, but always at odds with one another. Yeah. And in one of them, they're cyborg angels in the future. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, Mike, I love Mike yeah. films. So if... You're into those kinds of movies. Go watch Yakuza Apocalypse. Fuck, fuck. If you everybody else don't know what they're talking about. If you like crazy Japanese cinema, like if you like movies like Versus, if you like Itchy the Killer, if you like um, Tokyo Gore Police and Machine Girl, Zombie Ass Toilet Good of the Dead. Dead. <laughs> if you like any of those films, the the this film. Will be right up your alley, but but given that it's a Mike film, it's it, Mike. What I love about Mike is that he is a glorious mix of he his films are are like a mix of an art film combined with glorious exploitation, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> if it's like if like a trauma director was actually a maestro. Yeah, you know, like. I, I love I love trauma films, but they are not like maestro movies. Oh no, Mike no. is a maestro, but he does that same shit. Mm -hmm. All right, and with that, uh, we can't even really begin to talk about the plot without going into spoilers. So spoilers. <laughs>
All right, so the title is Yakuza Apocalypse. Here's the setup. A Yakuza boss in the middle of an out-of-the-way Japanese village who is beloved by the people. It turns out to be a vampire and is killed and chooses his right-hand man to also be a vampire to carry on his work. To take, take his rightful place as a Yakuza, Yakuza vampire. vampire. They're not just vampires. They're specifically Yakuza vampires. So when you're bitten, you become not only a vampire, but also a Yakuza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you grow a tattoo on your back. And you just start acting like a miscreant Yakuza. <laughs> yeah. The best way to describe this in Western terms is as if there was a movie called Gangster Vampire, and not only did you turn into a vampire, Empire, but you started going, yeah, see? Yeah. All right, kappa, yeah, you gotta take me alive. You, you know, know it's, it's like if you get bitten and you not only turn into a vampire, you start recreating that scene in Goodfellas when Joe Pesci is yes. like, it's like, like, what's so funny? Like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And the reason it's called an apocalypse is for the same reason you call it the zombie apocalypse, which is everyone is turning into a Yakuza vampire. Everyone starts turning into a Yakuza. He builds an entire Yakuza army to go after the people that killed his boss. And the people that killed his boss turn out to be a guy who is a direct reference to Django from the movie Django. Yeah. He's, he's this, like, kind of, I, I guess, European-looking Japanese dude inside. Well, I think what, he's supposed to also be a little bit of a reference to like um the like Witch Doctor General. Probably, probably he's got he's got that uh that yeah he's got the rough he's got the hat but ex- he's yeah. got the coffin on his back. Absolutely, who uses guns and shoots people like a Western character. Um, it, it a, a kappa, a fast talking kappa. Yeah, um, which <laughs> is a monster from Japanese mythology that is a turtle man. Yup. Um, and oh. By the way, earlier in the stream today, I said in a lot of Asian stories, shit just happens, monsters just show up, and it's like, oh, okay, there's a bot. That's how the cap is introduced. He just shows he up. He just walks there's on no screen. explanation. And people are just kind of cool. He's there. Like, one guy's like, what the fuck? But everyone just kind of rolls Yeah, yeah, it. they're these two stupid Yakuza guys who are kind of the voice of the audience. They're always going, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. They're brothers, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's also uh, uh, one of the other guys is this kind of nerdy-looking guy who's played by Mad Dog from The Raid. Yeah, <laughs> and his character's name is in this movie is also Mad Dog. And he gets, like, a tattoo of a dog on his back at the end. It's like... Yeah, yeah, because near the climax of the movie, he dr- they've stolen the blood of the Yakuza boss vampire, and he drinks it so that he becomes a Yakuza vampire himself and fights the new boss Yeah, and up just in- to prove who is best. And up until that point, he's basically been, like, this kind of nerdy-looking guy with, like, a backpack and, like, scrolls and, like, 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 like... Like looks yeah, like, like posters. Yeah, like and posters, yeah. In, in, his, in, his, in his backpack. We never really see what they are, but he just kind of comes across like like an everyday otaku or something like yeah. that. But he has the martial arts skills of the guy playing him, so he kicks complete ass. And he seems to just be human, and so he starts, he kills the, the boss vampire almost single-handedly, except for like the one guy shoots shoots him. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoots uh, him to weaken him so that the guy can find him. But when he out. fights, when he starts fighting his apprentice, his apprentice starts getting better and better, and he's like, I can't be beaten by this guy. I beat his boss. I gotta get stronger. So he drinks the blood so that he can have the vampire powers too, and they can go head-to-head. Yeah. Um, and because he is Mad Dog, it's still kind of that werewolf versus vampire yeah, kind of. Kind of. Know? Kind of. Um, and that, that is just the tip of the iceberg because apparently their boss, their boss, the evil mastermind behind this whole thing is this fucking felt frog man. (laughs) Yeah. He's a guy in like a funny, like animal mascot frog outfit. Yeah. It's like something you would expect to see at like a high school football game. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. Like, (laughs) like if you're into Japanese culture, you see these things all over the place. Like people dressed up as Pikachu and it, it is like, and they build up his appearance. Like the modern monster, the ultimate terrorist, he will arrive. And Like, and in his presence, the ground shakes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And so it would be like if you built up this badass and he showed up in a Pikachu outfit. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
it's fucking hilarious. Or if he like was dressed like a squirrel or something. Just yeah, like... yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is they still make a big deal of the fact that he's still in that costume. Like he cannot walk up and down stairs by himself. He has to be helped, yep. even though he's this badass. And he kicks the shit out of all the Yakuza. He kicks the shit out of all the Yakuza vampires that the main character has built. Yeah. And and he's just a complete fucking badass. And on top of that, he's also fucking hypno-toad. Because yeah, yeah. if you stare into his eyes and he does his stare technique at you, you get put into this like metronome state where you're stuck doing this, where he can do whatever the fuck he wants to you. A- and the eyes on the fucking felt costume he's wearing literally like change yeah. when he does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and, and at some point when he's defeated like you gotta understand this guy shows up it's like if you're a final fantasy fan when this guy shows up it's like when you have a random encounter and it's a tonberry and you're like oh shit it's a fucking tonberry you know what just run just and it's fucking not even run. just like a tonberry it's like a tonberry if he was one of the final bosses that had like multiple forms yes because <laughs> he does take the costume off at one point and, and is... he's a frog underneath. <laughs> God damn it. He's a frog man underneath. He takes off the a frog head. costume and he's got a frog head. And we're just like, Mike never changed. Yeah. <laughs> this is the greatest movie ever fucking made. Um, and there's a point where he's fighting the fucking frog guy in this serious epic battle. And like the two stupid Yakuza guys, the two stupid Yakuza brothers show up in a fucking like giant big raid with, with machine guns to take on the fucking frog guy. Yeah, yeah. One of those like souped up <laughs> trucks that's got like all these crazy lights on it. It's actually like, it's actually like a thing in Japan for truckers to have these insane oh, man. looking trucks. And it's like a thing. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome looking yeah it was a little underwhelming that it basically just had the machine guns and not like rocket launchers or something yeah 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 you expected to go a little uh, just a little bit farther yeah. but like the when that shows up you're like what this is also the kind of movie where you'll where you'll have characters getting into a gunfight where they're just shooting each other and they're hitting each other but they keep coming at each other until whoever falls first loses yeah like, like, characters are just tearing each other the fuck apart. It is gory and bloody and magnificent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really it's really good. It's really good. It's really ridiculous. And that's not even getting into the awesome story about the young boy. No. Like, there's this young boy who the old Yakuza boss stopped from killing himself because he was gonna he was gonna have his dad kill him so that his dad didn't have the burden the financial burden of dealing of 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 handling both him and his and his dad's life. Yeah, because part of the setup is the town is like kind of broke yeah it's in a re- recession um so the accuser boss stops him from ki- stops the dad from killing his son and, and gives them the money to keep on going so it's like oh thank you yakuza boss thank you yeah but then later when they come to kill the yakuza boss they end up accidentally killing his dad in the crossfire so he he has nothing left to live for and he's like he's mourning and he's he's crying and he's like i don't know what the fuck to do so when uh, the right-hand man, who's now the new Yakuza boss, um, who's now the, the Yakuza vampire, shows up, he's like, take that anger and and project it outward. Vengeance is the answer. And yeah, yeah, and then turns him into a Yakuza vampire. So he becomes this badass Yakuza vampire. And with his this... tattoo, and he has a Yakuza tattoo, but it's like an anime version yeah. of a fucking Yakuza tattoo. Yeah, it's like a little bat. It's yeah, adorable. like a little cartoon bat, as opposed to, like, you know, the badass one that the main character has. And he's like... This berserker with an axe, and it's awesome. Yeah, and he's got this whole storyline where he's trying to get to the. Uh, there was a yakuza member who betrayed the boss. Yeah, yeah, it's what sets everything off. And so he has has this whole vengeance quest for the Yaku- for that yakuza member. And that yakuza member is uh, the only girl of the gang. It seems. Yeah, to yeah, be. yeah. It's female yakuza boss, and she is the more and more absurd things start happening like the cap is showing up the vampire showing up and the frog guy showing up she just starts losing her mind and her brain literally literally starts melting out of her ears yeah <laughs> like the, the entire yeah half the time she's like do you hear that i hear something dripping and here's the weird thing like they say it's in your head but but <laughs> because it's a mike flick that ain't good enough it the sound literally is emanating yeah. from the inside of her head. So if you stand near her, you can hear it. Yeah, it, it, is, it is both literally and metaphorically her brain melting and her losing her mind. 
Um, and, and you know it's literally happening because the other characters react to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is happening in the movie. You know? And at one point she goes so crazy because the thing about being a Yakuza is if you don't have normal people to kind of prey upon, you got no money, you got no power, you got nothing. And so she's literally burying people in the ground in order to create a crop of new people <laughs> new civilians and she's and that's the point where you establish the line between what is literally happening and what is like all in her head yeah uh, because she starts imagining these people growing out but they're not actually doing it she's just going crazy yeah yeah she's as going opposed nuts. to when her when her brain starts melting it literally happens <laughs> oh my oh, god Jesus Christ God oh hi kitten yeah yeah, go yeah. With yeah yeah what's up what's up kitty do you want all right you're going over there whatever all right cat's going over there <laughs> oh jeez oh my god this movie was just completely it's insane awesome. it's fucking awesome it is is everything i wanted and so much more um god damn it what are you doing if you can find a copy of this because I don't know how available it is here in the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's available in some English-speaking regions, but not all of them. Yeah, but if but if you're in an area that, that has access to it, or if you have a way to see this movie, definitely seek oh, it God, out. Oh, God, yeah. If you see it at a, on the shelf at a convention, definitely oh, pick God, it up. Oh, God, pick it up, yeah. Like, I'm hoping it'll eventually like get on Netflix or something. I hope so. I you hope know. so. Like Because this, this movie is fucking magnificent, and it deserves the kind of... It's the kind of movie... That when I was a teenager, like nerds used to be really into. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it feels like it feels like a '90s fucking yeah. Japanese, you know, or like Hong a Kong like flick. a Rikio or yeah. like 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 an Itchy the Killer. Any of those movies that I remember as a teenager going to conventions and finding on the shelf, and then you do a viewing party with your friends, and it's insane, and you you barely understand what's happening most of the time, but yeah. you are loving every second of the insanity. Yeah, a absolutely. <laughs> well, one of the things I think is really interesting, really odd about like the differences in um audience expectation the way the like, audiences work is that all right you gotta understand this is a movie that is really really intended for asian audiences and fans of asian cinema it really yeah. is because the movie does not fucking handhold you no. it just is like that's happening accept it we're moving on yeah, because it much. does not give a sh it does not give a shit. It's not going to explain crap. It is not going to explain why all of a sudden a fucking playset of fucking Fuji Mountain is fucking in this movie and a giant frogman comes out. It's oh, yeah. not going to explain no, that. Frogman's final form is basically Godzilla. Yeah, <laughs> it is awesome. Yeah, and he breathes fire. It is fucking awesome. Yeah. It, this movie is not going to hold mm. your hand, and it's weird because for all that. A lot of modern Western audiences bitch about originality. It is that very need to have things explained which prevents originality. Well, absolutely. Well, the two things I know has happened. People always want originality. They want something they've never, they've never seen before. But then when they get it, they absolutely hate it. Yeah. You know, and they always and, they, and we always complain about movies. You know over explaining things or not not treating the audience smart or talking down to them or whatever but then when movies don't do that they hate it yeah yeah and it's <laughs> it's really frustrating and everyone always says like oh who's to blame there is it the audience or is it the filmmakers and at this point i'm willing to blame the audience yeah 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 y me too cause... you know because like so often like a movie will come and it will be exactly what everyone says they want and then they'll hate it and i'm just like well that's your fault like it's like yeah yeah if you, if you got what you asked for but you still didn't like it it, well then that's kind of on you absolutely, absolutely. you know um but that's a topic for another yeah day. yeah that's that's a that's a we could probably do like a whole like fucking <laughs> actual video on that oh, shit. ranting and shit god like that. damn it but oh god oh man just the, the movie uh, w be warned like 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 Getting into this movie, you're probably going to spend a good like maybe half hour just getting your brain in, into in in into gear with the movie. Yeah. Um, you're going to be a little lost, but once you get there and once you kind of figure out like what's going on and once you're, you, you get in a foothold into the movie, yeah, once the movie establishes, it itself, becomes pretty yeah. clear what's going on. 
Um, it it just takes a takes a little bit for you to acclimate yourself to the movie. Yeah, yeah. Your biggest your biggest hurdle is going to be the fact that Mike loves to screw around with literal with things that are literal and things that are metaphorical and and fucking doing them the way you don't Absolutely. do them. Absolutely. You know, like like her, the woman like leaking her brains out. Like it's like, no, don't you get it? She's losing her mind. Yeah. You yeah. know, like normally you would make that really subtle, but instead he does it. He makes it literal and not just literal, but like that's just the way this world works. Yeah, absolutely. Which hey, which hey, I mean you're you're dealing with frog monsters and fucking vampire yakuzas. Literal vampire yakuzas. You're not yeah. just a, you're not just a fucking vampire, you're also a Yakuza if you're bitten. Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the kind of rules we're dealing with, so it's not hard for me to, like, believe that a girl would go insane and her brain would start melting. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that in most, in most situations, you would think Yakuza vampire would be enough. But no, that ain't enough for Mike. No, no. Frog, there's gotta be a guy in a frog mascot costume who beats the shit out of dudes. There's gotta be... A uh, fucking giant dude who shows up. There's got to be machine guns on a truck. You know, we just... There's got to have... be an axe-wielding crazy maniac on top of a car. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. What the fuck is going on out there, Cat? I'm going to deal with that later. And uh, on that note, Yakuza Apocalypse, two thumbs up. Fuck yeah. Gotta watch it. Check it out. Masterpiece. Fuck you.